Got himself a little win over Josh Koscheck. Yes, that Josh Koscheck, who we just uh, posted on Instagram, foaming at the mouth, getting choked out a few weeks ago. Yep. They needed a fighter on short notice. Instagram so the cherry tree. They needed a fighter on short notice who will get a nice little loss against a fighter for them. And he's dumb enough. And he was dumb enough, and he got choked out again. This time, no foam at the mouth. But uh, I think he, I think Josh Koscheck's done. He's losing to fighters he wouldn't have lost to five years ago. Send him to Bellator. Yeah, send him to Bellator. <laughs> or Pride. Uh, Pride. Uh, yeah, Pride. Pride was so bad. <laughs> uh, anyways. So, oh, are they not around anymore? No. <laughs> UFC bought them like six years ago. Oh, is that how they got the little tiny guys? Yep. By buying Pride? No, they bought WEC for the tiny guys. Oh, okay. They got guys like Vanderlei Silver by buying Pride. He was in Pride? Yeah. He's way better than Pride. No, he took steroids. That's where he made his oh, name. Oh, well, that's fine then. He's doing steroids I'm okay with that. The Ryan Braun of UFC. Yeah. Yeah. The good. Japanese didn't care. Yeah, hello. Anyway, so those were the fights that mattered. That's why I brought them to you. And then also, you got a nice little uh, story this past weekend that we love very much. Fuck yeah. Uh, uh, would you like the fire or the win? Oh, the win. This one yeah. yeah, let's go. All he do is win, 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 no matter what. what? Got Jesus on his mind, he can never get enough. No. And every time he step up in the building, everybody hear our shots go up, go up, go up. And they stay there. Yeah. And they stay there. Yeah. And they stay ah, Tebow, I love you in my news. Tebow bless. <laughs> Tebow blessing us. Tebow bless you. He, uh, go ahead. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll handle this one. Uh, so Tebow and Pacquiao have been hanging out because I'm such a boxing expert. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love boxing. <laughs> have been hanging out together. Tebow stopped by the gym where Pacquiao likes to train, and let me tell you, as someone who used to work at an Asian TV station, Pacquiao loves media. <laughs> yeah, we got to go to his gym a few times. I've met Pacquiao, met Freddie Roach. First of all, Freddie Roach is probably the nicest guy ever. Oh yeah, he's great. He actually remembers your name if you see him again. I'm surprised he remembers anything with that disease. Hey, just because he can't walk doesn't mean he can't remember <laughs> your name. That's that's how dare you. Uh, anyways, so uh, Tebow stopped by the Pacquiao training camp and uh, twatted and Instagrammed or whatever else the picture of uh, those two together. He says, my brother, my Filipino brother in Christianity. Oh, yeah. How sweet. <laughs> it is sweet. Yeah. They're going to pray together. Hey, uh, a family that prays together stays together. Think Tito prays himself? I pray to Tito. Yeah, how does that work? Doesn't he know he's God? Dear me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would like me to end world hunger. Dear heavenly me. Right. I would like me to make it possible for Pacquiao to beat the shit out of that black guy. <laughs> you, you know that's what Tebow was saying. He's like, he's like, I want the lesser black guy to beat the black guy. Right. You know that's what Tebow. He, all, ra- all religious people are racist. Yeah, of course. Exactly. They think they should still have slaves because it's in the Bible. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, that, that must be an interesting prayer process for Tebow. Right. Praying to himself. Affliction very much. Yeah. Or as they would say uh, on the net files, oh, Lord. <laughs> Sweet Lord. Lord. Sweet Tebow. Uh-huh. Oh, Tebow. Oh, Tebow. So, that, that's really all it was. I just I love you. Oh, brotherly love. Uh, speaking of brotherly love, it's time to talk about the real fighting on the road to WrestleMania. That is good. Come in. There. WrestleMania 31? <laughs> yes. Question mark? 31. St- one st- is upon us. Finally. Six days away. Six goddamn days. At the time of this recording, we're six days away. Just think, in six days, we'll probably be watching the main event. It's 845. Mm-hmm. Our time. That's right. Uh, in five days, we'll be flying out. Yeah. To get our drink on before the show. Get a drink on before we get our stink on. Maybe do some B-dubs. Who knows? Who, fuck, we'll go to some local bars. We'll hang out with those fucking mm, Norcalians yeah, and yeah. tell them how much the Giants suck. <laughs> right. Yeah, fuck your Giants, assholes. Fuck the Sharks. Yeah. Bro, uh, do yeah, it. yeah, fuck the Sharks. They're like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. But I'll do it with my 49ers jersey on so I don't get my ass kicked. <laughs> right. Yeah. I love these guys. Don't yeah, worry. exactly. Hey, hey, two Dodger, two Dodger fans in one bar? 
Someone's coming out with some head trauma. So you're saying I should bring my cap shirt? Yes. For this outing. I'll bring my Phil Dawson jersey. <laughs> you're to right. To redeem ourselves. Uh, anyways, WrestleMania is upon us. Uh, I figured we uh, talk about the card, talk about our predictions. Before we do that, there's one story I want to talk about. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> that was very uh, cup check of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, Pedro Aguayo Ramirez, a.k.a. Uh, Perro. Perro. Perro Aguayo, who I've actually interviewed before. Really? Yeah, for the Mexican station. Damn. He for. Yeah, he was a super nice guy. Uh, he he died. That was very... <laughs> <laughs> he died? That was very... Uh, Brent killed a cowbell. guy. <laughs> he died. He died. Sorry. He died last week uh, in the middle of a tag team match with Rey Mysterio. He was against Rey Mysterio. Very strange. Uh, very sad. Very crazy. Um, At first, the stories were like, Ray killed a guy. I'm like, what? <laughs> Brick killed a guy. like, oh, no, not another Chris Benoit. Yeah, it was. It, at least this one was in the ring. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, if Brett, Chris, if you were gonna do it, you should have done it in the ring. Sir. Come on, yeah, give Make the it real, entertaining. The real the WWE universe. universe. Um, so they were in the match, and uh, Ray sets him up for the six one nine, and that's about the last thing that ever happened. <laughs> right. It was a double six one nine. As soon as he hit the ropes, uh, slumped over the ropes, you could tell something was wrong. He was not responding. Even his tag team partner was slumped over next to him. Was uh, was kind of poking him and prodding him, and he wasn't responding. And well, then, it was weird right before that because the usual setup for the six one nine is Ray doing like a little hurricane rana, uh, in, or some type of hurricane rana, and you're supposed to go into the rope. The guy went through the rope at first, and then yeah. got back into the ring, and Ray had to do a drop kick into the Ray rope. Was a little, little strange. So he just kind of looked like discombobulated, combobulated before. Possibly so. Um, so Ray did the six one nine, and it was supposed to be ducked by both guys, mm-hmm. and the other guy ducked it, and it got ducked by the the, well, the, the, dead, dude. the dead guy because he was just slumped over. That's when they kind of started realizing things was wrong. So Ray and his tag team partner were were uh, working on the guy who wasn't dead right. at this point, and they tried to push the other guy off the ropes and kind of see what was up. And as they kind of pushed him off the rope, he just slumped to the bottom rope. He, I mean, then, he was gone by then. Then you could someone tell. came out. Conan came out. Came over to um, see what was going on. Is that who it was, Conan? Yeah, it was Conan. Okay. He's just fat now. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I he, see him on Lucha he, Underground. He, like, pushed him off the rope, and the guy, like, just, face planted. Yeah, and he just fa- he was I'm gone. sure that didn't help with no. his death at all. Um, the, the cause of death, they are saying, is uh, trauma to the neck and cervical fracture. Which is so weird. So he must have just kind of taken a drop kick wrong and maybe had too much whiplash in the, in the selling. You know, probably just sold it wrong. Too much whiplash. thinking it started with when he was chasing Ray into the corner, and Ray put up his feet. And knocked him over. Yeah. But that was the whiplash that really discombobulated him. Then he went flying to the ring and, you know, his head flew back there. Then he comes in the ring, he gets kicked in the back, and then his head flops back from the rope as well. I read that one at first, and then I read today that they're thinking it's from a drop kick from Ray's tag team partner. Oh, like early, even earlier in the match? Yeah, so I, maybe they're just saying that so Ray Mysterio doesn't have a tarnished name. No, I mean, it, was, it <laughs> wasn't knows? Ray's fault. These it, were regular wrestling moves. It, it was normal, everyday wrestling. Yeah, it, it's no one's fault. It's a very freak accident. This guy is very famous. He's only 35. He's been wrestling for 25 years. Uh, his Apparently father, his dad's a legend. His, oh, yeah, his, he's, yeah he's Pero Aguayo Jr. His father was Pero Aguayo. Um, super famous. Both very famous. This guy is a multi, multi-time champion. And uh, very strange and, and very sad. Yeah, uh, this is definitely. not not the type of thing you want to see in a ring. So no, uh, it's an, it's unfortunate. Uh, all joking aside, our thoughts and uh, good juju go mm-hmm. out to uh, whoever needs to go out to because uh, no one in the wrestling community wants to see this. But I will say, UFC no deaths in the ring. Wrestling still got a bunch. So okay, thanks, 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 thanks for tarnishing. It's a more safe sport. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for tarnishing. <laughs> Let's move on to a happier thing, which is WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Which we'll be at. Uh, we'll probably take some audio the and macho some King. selfies and all that good stuff over there. So let's run down the card. <laughs> yes. Hashtag please. selfie. Let's run down the card. We'll talk about what we think should happen, what uh, what will probably happen, all that good stuff. I'll quickly read the matches, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go back. Okay. So we've got Rollins versus Randy Orton, the Bella Twins versus AJ Lee and Paige, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, Intercontinental Championship ladder match, Rusev versus John Cena, Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt, Triple H versus Sting, and the world title match, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. Let's start at the top with Seth Rollins versus Randy Orton. Mm, um, yeah. I think Rollins has to go over um, in order for our other hope to come true. Rollins needs to go over so he's not you know, totally beat up and tired, I, I put in quotes, so he can later cash in. I, I actually think the opposite. I think if Orton wins, Rollins is going over that night. 
Oh, it's kind of like the Bret Hart thing at WrestleMania 10 where he lost to Owen Hart but then went over on Yokozuna for the world title. And kind of like what they do at the go home, the come home shows where you get your ass kicked Whoever on Monday Night Raw, kicked. you means you win at the pay-per-view. Yeah, the formula sticks, man. God, they never Ask fucking Einstein. changed Einstein, he created this. Did he? Yeah, it was his formula. It wasn't the game. Nah. <laughs> he took credit for it. Right. Uh, I got to go over. Well, who needs the win more, Rollins or Orton? I think for the storyline, Orton needs to win. It's the revenge. That's true. It's the revenge, and uh, Rollins is a heel, so he'll bounce back. Yeah, I mean, this guy, when he loses, it doesn't matter at all, ever, because he's so badass at everything. He doesn't care. He is the best yeah. they have right now. I will say- Promo to wrestling. Yeah. I will say the one thing that's really nice about Lucha Underground, which I've been watching lately, you guys, mm-hmm. if, you have, if you're wrestling fans and you've not seen Lucha Underground, it is probably the best wrestling you'll see on American television. Uh, the one thing that I really like about them is they actually count your wins and losses in a UFC type fashion. If you win a bunch of times, they give you a title shot. So it's like what WWE used to be, right? When Vince Senior was running, when you the get company. the Intercontinental Title, you're just steps away from that's, the World Title. That's just a, a stepping winning. block, and uh, it's going to mean something. So, anyways, so I I said Rollins will win, so he could uh, later cash in. Well, I think you're probably right. I'll stick with it just, uh, so, just we're, so we have some dissension so, here, so we're not butt fucking each other. Uh, the Bella Twins versus AJ Lee and Paige. Um, here's the thing. I happened to watch Total Divas a couple weeks ago. Ooh. And I haven't watched it since, and I probably should have because I might know the answer at this point if I did. They were up for a new contract, and they left it at the cliffhanger of, are they going to resign? They really don't want to. Well, since the show happened months ago, I'm right. pretty sure that they've resigned. Right? Well, you know what's funny is I Googled it, and I couldn't find anything other than synopsis for Total Divas. Um, so the thought is if they lose, maybe that means they didn't resign. But here's here's my thought. If they didn't resign, this would be a singles match, and Nikki would be dropping the belt. Mm-hmm. So my guess is they've resigned, and they'll probably go over dirty. Plus, they're the stars of the show of Total Divas. Yeah, yeah. Without them, it's it's a bunch of jabronis. Yeah. Nick Nikki wanted to go do TV, and Bree wanted to have a baby. That was the big is it, toss-up. But then they put the title on Nikki, so I think there's something in right. That. They, you, they, they put it on her that week. Do our TV, Nikki. Yeah, I'll, I'll do something. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, I'm guessing that the Bella Twins will go over dirty. Yes. Okay. Which, yeah, cause the reason I say that is because there's going to be so many faces winning t- tomorrow, or this weekend, I mean. Right. Tomorrow. I Same wish. Thing. I wish. Um, I am going to win. <laughs> giving her more Triple H. Yeah. Because so many faces are going to win, they need some heels to win. And of course, the Bella Twins are pretty hot right now in terms of so going hot over. Right now. Like, Nikki's won a lot of matches lately. They've been protecting yeah. her, so they're going to probably continue to protect her. Yeah, they'll probably go over, and then my guess is the next pay-per-view will be Nikki versus AJ Lee for the title, and she'll finally drop it. Right. That's, Give AJ the title back. That's uh, that's who should have it. Yes. Her or Paige yeah. at all times. Either one. Until yeah. she, ooh, but remember the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania. Maybe Charlotte's coming up, because she's been off TV for a while at NXT. Oh, Charlotte Flair. Yeah. God, one can only hope. Her, she's been off. Sami Zayn's been off. Oh, has he? Yeah. Okay. And, and also, I haven't watched NXT in a while. Who's the Not since their who's last the English guy that just lost the title? Uh, Neville. Neville. He's been off for a while now too. I like Neville a lot. I think he's an amazing wrestler. I don't see him fitting into WWE. If they treat him like they treated Benoit uh-huh. and let him be the workhorse that's just a fan favorite, that just goes out there and busts his ass, just kicks ass. Don't give him a stupid character. Just go out there and yeah. kick ass. Which I mean, him going by his name is good enough already, and having no real character. Well, do you know why Benoit him. got over? Besides because he wrestled. Well, a he was a great wrestler, but b we had announcers like Jim Ross that just yeah. called him the workhorse oh. and gave him so much credit for how hard of a worker he was. People, if you have the network, the WWE network, I suggest you go back to the WrestleMania. It's only nine ninety nine. That's right. You go back to the WrestleMania where Chris Benoit beat Shawn Michaels and the game. Uh, the game did not go over because Chris That's Benoit weird. won the world title in a triple threat match. Unexpectedly with Chris with Triple H in there. Yeah. But the call that Jim Ross gives at the end of that. The, the emotions and everything because he knew how great of a wrestler Chris Benoit is. And this is probably going to be his only moment ever in WWE. It's an amazing call and everybody yeah. should go back and listen. Chris to Benoit, it. or as my best friend growing up, Marshall used to call him. Crispin? Crispin Wah. He thought his first name was Crispin. He's an idiot. <laughs> Get your damn hands off of her. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, George McFly. <laughs> and then we have the, jo- uh, the George, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle. The only, uh, the only bad match, I think. This is the, I don't have a match in WrestleMania, so stick me in something. So give me my payday, please. Yeah. We got The Miz, Curtis Axel, Ryback, Fandango. He's still around? No, 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 no. Uh, excuse me. Fun. 
Dongo. You're right. You are so right. Adam Rose, Zach Ryder, Jack Swagger. Poor oh, Jack God. Swagger.